happy Friday, everyone. Um, again, I'm Naomi Cedar. And um, I want to do today my second attempt to stream um, a little bit about exploring Python. And um, I've called today's uh, Objects All the Way Down, which is, is a reference to an old joke. Uh, but you will probably see what I mean as we go forward. Um, I do want to, before we get started, say a few things. So um, this time, um, thanks to, to some advice from uh, Bruno Hoxha, I think maybe I've got a little bit more of a smooth experience. We'll see. Um, this is still a new world for me, but uh, we'll, we're learning as we go. Um, and um, I will be posting this Jupyter Notebook um, at the same link. I'll be adding it, but it's not there yet uh, because there is nothing that it would really benefit people to, to get in advance. Uh, most of what we will be doing now will be more involved with poking around. Um, Last week, I was um, a bit more uh, scripted. I, I really had kind of a, a presentation to walk through. Uh, this time, I'm trying something different. I'm, this is all material that I've been through several times, but rather than present a lot of static material as well, mainly we're going to be uh, working in um, little cells in uh, Jupyter Notebook, in effect working in a Python shell, uh, and just sort of exploring these things together. Uh, also, um, as I mentioned last week, uh, uh, my publisher, Manning Publications, for the Quick Python Book, third edition, which I wrote, uh, they are giving the ebook version of that away uh, free. Uh, until May 30th as uh, part of their response to the COVID-19 crisis. So if you're interested in that and you don't have one, uh, you can take advantage of that to get the ebook free. Uh, or I believe it's 35% a, a off of the paper version. Um, but um, free is definitely a better price than, uh, than uh, anything else. So you can uh, have a look at that. Uh, and then, again, I want to direct people uh, to uh, PyCon 2020, which is online. You can go to YouTube and search for PyCon and find their channel, or that's the rather complicated link there. Uh, and um, there are a fair number of talks online already. Uh, I know yesterday I uh, sat in and listened to most of the uh, Trainers Summit which um, uh, having created the Education Summit years ago, this was sort of like seeing a, a grandchild. Uh, and um, since the, the Trainers Summit kind of is an outgrowth of the, uh, of the Education Summit, but that was very useful stuff and, and there's lots of good stuff here. So, um, oh, I see that Kojo is, is, is there. And yes, I do have a Python Day Mexico shirt on. Uh, as I do these, I'm trying to, to take the t-shirts out of my good conference shirt drawer rather than the old ratty ones. So uh, yeah, uh, happy to, happy to uh, rep uh, Python Day Mexico. Um, and then one final thing, um, please don't be shy. Uh, about um, being in the chat and typing things into chat as we sort of go through these things. Um, I, I'd be happy to get some feedback here. Uh, you know, you can see me, I can't see you, so it's kind of a vacuum, so please feel free to uh, enter things into, into the chat, uh, and um, we'll see what we, we come up with as we go forward here. So before we get started, I want to, I don't know, editorialize a little bit uh, about using um, what we call Python shell or what I as an old timer call a Python shell. Um, so we're going to be using um, this Jupyter notebook uh, and we'll be you know, using the code cells in it, 
uh, which in effect are a form of what uh, is called the REPL, the read eval print loop. Uh, so basically you type something in, the interpreter evaluates it, um, prints the result, and you loop, and you keep on doing that. Uh, and this is, this is, as I say, what, what us old timers call the shell, or you can call a, a command line, or whatever you want to call it. But it's a way of interacting uh, with the Python interpreter rather than doing a whole program. Uh, and, um, you know, there are a lot of different ways you can get a, a, a shell or, or this REPL. Uh, you can uh, just run Python at a command line. Uh, you can uh, use something like IPython, or, you know, you can use Jupyter Notebook, which is what I'm doing. Uh, you can use the shell window in idle, the command window, that's, that's totally fine. Um, or many of the IDEs like PyCharm and VS Code and all of those have shell windows, command windows as well. So um, I'm basically using the uh, Jupyter Notebook so that I can put a little bit of text around things a little bit more easily uh, and uh, keep it together. So um, whichever way you want to do it is fine. If you want to have a, a, a shell window open uh, so that you can play along at home, please do. Uh, I think that's a great way to go and you can um, then raise questions or, hey, wait a second, this, this doesn't do what you said it did or this does something weird. Uh, so you can be, you know, please enter, enter those in too. So just a little bit more editorializing about this shell. What's good about using uh, a, a Python shell is that um, you can explore simple examples really fast. You can learn how something works. Uh, you can use the dir function to see what's in an object in effect. Oh, and you can use the help uh, function to, to get any built-in doc strings and documentation. So it's, it's kind of a great thing that way, and you can um, explore an idea, or you can make sure that you understand syntax. So there are definitely some cool things about doing this. Um, the flip side, though, is that there are some things that are not so good uh, about using a shell. Uh, and um, one of those things is that using uh, a shell or a command program, a REPL loop, is by definition not really writing a connected program. So uh, particularly for beginners, uh, they, uh, it can be very confusing. You enter all of these commands in, but you don't have this whole exercise of starting at something and then kind of working your way through in logical steps. You're just doing bits and pieces. Um, and going along with that, and this is something that can be a problem for, for more experienced folks as well as beginners, is that it's kind of hard to keep the state of your program and all of its objects clear in your mind. Uh, if in fact you set X to one thing uh, several commands ago, and then oh, you're experimenting, you change it, uh, and then a little bit further along you go back, you have to remember, did I change this? Did I not? Where did I change it? What is it now? So you can end up sometimes with kind of confusing results that way. Uh, so it's again, not, not the best for doing anything that, that requires any sort of involved uh, any sort of involved logic or anything like that. So um, that's, that's sort of a drawback. And of course, um, depending upon what you're using, um, debugging, testing, version control, all of those things can be a little bit harder using uh, the shell and even exporting what you've done. If you're just using the plain old Python command line, uh, it's not always that easy to export what you've done. Uh, if you're using something like uh, IPython, then you can export particular lines. But you know, you'll tend to export both what you want as well as all of your experiments and mistakes along the way. So as I say, it's good for exploring. There are lots of things that are good about it, but it's not good for everything. Um, okay, well, so 
the first thing I want to talk about is uh, that in Python, uh, we definitely have an object-oriented language, uh, and it is uh, object-oriented um, much more, I think, than some people give it credit for. Uh, and that is why you don't need to write classes or write a, a, an object-oriented program in the sense that you would in Java. Uh, almost everything in Python is an object. And you know, last time when we were talking about variables, uh, you know, I made the case that um, your uh, variables are labels that get attached to objects. But then I sort of begged off on talking about, so what are these objects and where do they come from? And that's what I want to talk about uh, today a little bit. So, um, and here, you know, if you're watching and you want to, to chime in, that would certainly be cool. Uh, but um, we can say, for example, that, um, oh, let's say um, a string um, is, is going to be an object. Okay. Um, but what does that mean? Well, what that means is a few different things. So, um, for one thing, um, if we were to look at that object, we would see, and let me scroll this on down a little bit, that it has a whole bunch of attributes, using dir here to just see what the attributes of that object are. Uh, and using dir is usually one of the first things I do uh, to, to look here. So you can see we've got a whole bunch of dunder methods. We'll come back to the idea of those in a second. Uh, and we've got a whole bunch of other methods that are all part of the string object. Okay, so not only does it have contents, hello, uh, but it's got all of these other things, and most of those are methods, are, are things that, that the string can do uh, to itself or with something else. Okay, uh, and just kind of for comparison here, um, if we were instead uh, to make X be an object, which is kind of the original object. All other things in Python descend, inherit from this original object. And then you'll see that it's got a list of dunder methods and that's about it. And um, in fact, uh, if we call most of these for object, uh, they will be not implemented because object is meant to be the base of everything else. You will never, I think I can say that, at least I can say in 20 years, I have never had cause to create object directly uh, in a program that, that was actually doing something. So there are a lot of things that, so, you know, this is everything will eventually be object. Uh, and um, that kind of means that um, even if we create our own classes, we'll see in, in a second, it will uh, implicitly be a subclass of object. But the thing is, it's got basically uh, these sort of built-in methods already attached to it. So when I say everything is an object, um, I guess maybe we should, we should explore what that means and, and what that is. So, um, for example, I showed you a string and that's an object. Uh, I think maybe what would be helpful here is to think about things in Python that might not be objects. Particularly if you're coming from another language, you might assume that, that there are things that don't really count as objects that inherit from this, this base class of object and have all of this stuff attached to them. Uh, if anybody's out there, well, I mean, I know a couple of you are, but uh, if anybody's out there, what things are, would you expect would not be objects in Python? And I'll, I'll pause and take a breath while, you know, if anybody wants to put something in chat, that will be great. Uh, otherwise, I will fake it. Okay, so we've got a suggestion of none. Uh, 
Yeah, Kojo, I will be talking about the Dunder methods in a second. Right now, I, I'm not as, and I guess I, I should have made that clear, I'm not as interested in the stuff attached to an object just as things that might not be objects. So I've got a couple of suggestions here. None might not be an object. Ints might not be objects. Well, and then the counter argument is everything is an object. Okay, well, if, if something is an object, like a string, remember I, I defined a string and, and I, I'm just sort of spoiling the surprise and saying, yes, that's an object, right? Um, we can do, uh, we can find out the, um, the class of that and we can see that it's got a string. So if it's somehow a class, it must be inheriting from object you know, that, that's got to be that. So uh, that is. Now, um, our next suggestion, or one of our suggestions was an int. And that's actually um, true in a lot of languages, or not in some languages. Uh, it used to be my, my, my pet, one of my pet peeves in teaching Java was that you had to explain to people that everything was an object except for all the things that weren't. And like integers were one thing that was a primitive type and it wasn't really an object type. And then people would get confused and, and it was just kind of a pain. So int is one suggestion. So actually let's change this to a dir here. And so we'll do that again. Remember we got that long list. So suppose we do that with the integer one. Okay. Um, now it looks like there's a whole bunch of machinery attached to an integer and we've got some methods. And uh, if we were to uh, do type instead, you know, it's, it's an int. Uh, so, Nope, it looks like ints are fine. Okay, other suggestion was none. Okay. Well, so we can we can see there what, what's going on. Is none an object or is none none? Okay, again, none has a lot of stuff attached to it. Uh, in fact, none is an object. It's its special uh, type of object. It's, it's what we call uh, a singleton. That is, there is only one none uh, that will ever be created. It's always the same object, but in fact, it's an object. Okay, now, are there things that are not objects in Python. Modules, okay, um, that, that is, a, is a good one. So let's do import CSV. Um, and when we do that, we will get the CSV module imported, right? Okay. Um, then if we do dir csv and it shows all of that same kind of kind of stuff we've got an we've got an object we've got all of the dunder methods and all of this class stuff and again i'll show you what those are in a sec as we move on okay so we've got a lot of stuff here so in fact modules are objects as well Okay, there are a few things. So what happens if we do, if we use a plus sign? Okay, uh, a plus sign. In fact, the operators are not, uh, not really objects. Uh, same thing for some of the keywords. 
like DEL. It's going to hate me. There we go. Uh, it's, it's just not allowed. So there are some things. Now, one other thing I want to say before we go too much further down this path, we've noticed that uh, when we do dir, like we do dir on a string, uh, oops, I did not mean to do that. Let's do, we've got all, all of this stuff here and whatever, and these things will do different things. And we, we'll talk a little bit about that generally, as I say in a second. Uh, but when we have that, um, and because Python uses objects, um, there's something else going on in Python that is unlike some other object-oriented languages. Uh, and we refer to this by the phrase duck typing. And what we mean by duck typing is if it walks like a duck and quacks like a duck, it's a duck. Uh, and in the example of this is iteration. So if I make a for loop here, I can iterate over any of these things, right? Yet they're different things. One of them's a string, one of them's a set, uh, and uh, one of them's a list. So if I do uh, in a one print uh, item, I do that, I get ABC, but I can do it with A2, uh, I can do it with A3, uh, of course, sets do not preserve order. So we get it in a different order, but we get the same pieces. Uh, so all of those things go into the same for loop and all I did was change the variable. That's because it doesn't matter what type I give it as long as that type implements some of those little double underscore methods we've seen. Uh, in such a way that it follows the iteration protocol. That is, it behaves the right way. If it walks like an iterative and quacks like an iterator or iterable, uh, then it works. So that's also part of what's floating around in the mix. Uh, so any, I mean, if you have any questions, feel free to put them in. Um, I'll, I'll sort of take a quick breath and then we'll go on and, and do a little bit more. Okay, so let's create the simplest possible class. To do that, we need the class keyword uh, we need a class name. And since I just talked about duck typing, I'm going to call it the duck class. Um, it needs parentheses. Uh, inside parentheses, we could say what it was inheriting from, but we don't need to do that. And a colon. And then we need to give it a body. The simplest possible body we can give it is just pass. In other words, do nothing. Okay, we do that. We have a legal class. Nothing happened. Uh, but now let's, uh, let's actually, we can actually make an instance of uh, the duck class. Um, and I'll just stick that alone so that we get it to the REPL to sort of show what that, what Donald is. So if I do that, um, I get a duck class in my main module and it's, it's, that's its ID and all of that. Uh, or if I want to, I could do a DIR on, um, on Donald. And you can see I don't have anything defined, but I've got all of the same basic thunder methods that uh, object has because since I didn't say it was inheriting from anything, up here, uh, where I defined it, I left the parentheses blank. That means I'm only inheriting from object. But since I am inheriting from object, I have all of these Dunder methods, all of these little functions defined uh, the same way that object does, which usually means not much. Okay, uh, but 
that's really um, a pretty boring class. I think we would agree. So and actually, I don't need the parentheses at all if I'm not giving it anything. So I can also do that. Um, so then in order to actually do things with a class, with an object, it needs to have some sort of data usually and some sort of function that's different than just the weird stuff that object defined by default. So we can make some methods for our class. So I'm going to first of all uh, give a definition for um, this particular um, dunder method. And by the way, all of those things that we've seen where they um, begin and end with a double underscore, uh, a lot of people uh, call that a dunder method. So I've got this dunder method in it. And um, I'm going to uh, set it up so that we can do a couple of things when we create a class. So I'm going to say that if I don't give it any other name, it's going to be called a duck, since it is the duck class. And if I don't say what sound it makes, it's going to have no sound. OK. And this works pretty much like a function, except now I'm saying, uh, yeah, they do call it a magic method. That's quite right. Uh, and and that's, um, that's, that's actually, um, what should I say? It, it's equally correct in everything, um, and it's starting to be more popular. It used to be we only called them dunder. Uh, but um, they, they sometimes, well, it, no, magic method, no, let me think about that. No, I'm not sure it's magic special methods, I think, maybe. Hmm. I am not sure, actually. When I saw you type that into chat, it made perfect sense, but I can't recall where I would have seen that. Uh, in any case, um, I think maybe I think maybe that's right that that magic methods is is not the usual Python way of saying it, but most Python people would understand what you meant. Yeah, I think maybe that's what I would say. Uh, so in any case, um, the other thing I'm doing here is that I am setting the um, here some data that goes with the instance. And I want to talk through this here in a second. So we will do Oh, it is a method, a magic method in Spanish. Cool. Uh, I always struggle trying to find out what the Spanish terms are for some of the programming stuff. There's no real handy dictionary that you can go look up those things. Um, and if you try using just like Google Translate, you can get all sorts of weird stuff that has nothing to do with programming. Um, so sound. OK, so this dunder init is something that is run um, whenever an object is, is created, whenever we make an instance of our object, uh, it will go ahead and run uh, dunder init on that particular object as it's being created. So when I gave it an extra couple of bits of information, it can store those and attach them to the uh, instance itself. Uh, and uh, in other languages, they're not as explicit as Python. Uh, in Python, we always use this self thing as a way to refer to the actual instance that is being created or being worked on. So I've got that. And then let's do one other uh, method that isn't a uh, dunder method. 
so, so don't do that. Excuse me. Hello, I want to call it. Uh, and it will just get self. And all it will do is print. Um, let's use an F string. There we go. Um, so now I can go ahead and do the same thing. And um, you can see here that we've got kind of the same stuff going on, except now down here below, when we look at all of the stuff in the object, there are three other things here. There's hello, which is this method I made up here. There is name, which we set right here. And there is sound, which we also set up here. Okay, and then we can get rid of that guy and we can do things like, uh, and we can do that. We can then make uh, our duck be uh, Donald, um, and can do that. So that's the basics of a class. Um, and as I say, there are, are, are other of these uh, particular um, dunder methods, and we saw the whole list. One that's really common is uh, to do uh, the uh, str, dunder str, which is what happens if you try to make an object into a string. So right now, if we print Donald, uh, we get that, which is not too helpful most of the time. So we can make a method uh, that will take care of that. Uh, and we could make it return, let's do another F string. Um, that. So if we do that, um, then when we print this, uh, it's going to, in order to print it, it needs to have a something that is printable, and that would be a string. So it will go ahead and say, yes, let's do this kind of conversion. So basically, this more explicitly would be that. Oh, and let's comment that out of the way. And let's make sure we complete our parentheses there. Okay, when we call the stir function on an object, it will go and see what it can get from the dunder stir method for that object. Uh, in this case, we defined it. If that object doesn't have a dunder stir method, it will keep on looking up the, the objects that it descends from uh, until it finds one that does. Okay, in this case, we're not inheriting from anything except object. The, the grandmother of all objects. So it goes all the way up and without this defined, it would go all the way up and find the objects method uh, of, of turning into a string, which is the thing that we saw just before. So um, that um, is kind of the basics of a class. Um, but there are a couple of things here that um, don't really show you how things work. So I'm going to make another function here. And um, I'm going to call this thing, um, this function goodbye. Uh, and it will... Now, let's see if I can do this right. Um, there we 
go. That's what I wanted to do. Get rid of the extra. Okay, and I let me just sort of prove to you that that works. Let's do that. Okay, so that's just a function, right? Um, what do you suppose would happen if we tried to glue this on to our Donald object? By that I mean, suppose we were to do something like this. Okay. First of all, do you think that's legal? Will we get a syntax error? Legal. All right, well, let's, let's see. Certainly didn't get a syntax error. Okay. Um, and if we do this all the way down here, we now have a good buy stuck on it, so it worked. Okay. Now, what happens if we try that? kind of weird. I have to wait extra long because you've got a little bit of delay. So I have to keep that in mind. Okay, so we've got a hmm and a gonna fail. Oh no, come back. You're, you're, you're coming down and it's gonna work. Okay, but I have to point out here that um, goodbye takes a parameter and I'm not giving it a parameter. Well, let's try it. Oops. Yeah, it didn't work. Dang, it was supposed to. Let's see here. I need to go back and, and, and check my notes and see if I've done something silly. Oh, my, my, yes. Okay, so that doesn't work. That doesn't work. Fair enough. Now, suppose, though, we do this differently. Suppose we do this. I'm going to that off. We do that. Uh, name Donald. Yep, yep, right, of course, because I'm being stupid now. There we go. There. Okay. So I now instead added it on to Duck rather than to Donald. Now, um, if I check Donald, is it going to have a good buy method or not? Because remember, I made Donald from my duck class. Mm -hmm. Then I changed the duck class. And now I'm going to see if Donald has that method. What are your thoughts? Yes or no? Will, will Donald be able to say goodbye now or not? Okay, if you were in a language like Java, the answer would be no way. All right, so let's see what we've got here. Uh, goodbye. And that was done there. And again, we're, we're doing this 
we're, we're creating new objects each time. So this isn't a holdover or anything, this is it. So I changed the class and it seemed that retroactively I changed the instance. Hmm. Okay, now we can go back to my original thing, which is if we do this now, it's got, according to when we just did the DIR thing, it, it's got a good buy method. If I call it, what will happen now? And in a way, this was really great that I did it the wrong way before because it kind of illustrates the difference. Um, Any thoughts? Nobody's willing to, to commit themselves. Again, no parameter here. Parameter required here. It's attached to the class. Okay, goodbye will still have an error. All right, let's see what happens. What do you know? It worked. And this sort of messing around was um, aiming to get at the notion of what uh, bound methods are. And that is, we don't think about it when we define it here as part of the class uh, with, and use self. Of course, we don't have to use self. We could use any word we wanted. We could have used thing there. Um, then it seems pretty natural that that would go ahead and work because we defined it as part of the class. But in fact, if we have a method like this and we attach it to the class, uh, it will work exactly the same way as a bound method. Okay. Um, and what I did before when I did it wrong uh, and got the error, Um, excuse me, equals goodbye. I did that, that's legal. And then when I tried to call that one, we now remember we got the error. Um, but if I would have done that would kind of work. Uh, it, it's uh, the difference is that if you attach a method to the class object, um, or more commonly, it's not really good practice to go sticking things onto the class in mid-flight, uh, you had defined it that way, then the instance itself, in this case Donald, but whatever it is, is automatically passed in as self. If you just stick something onto a particular object, that doesn't work. Those are not bound methods. Those are just objects that are stuck onto your class. And again, functions are objects too. We, we could poke at those and see that they were objects. Uh, so they can be a member of a class. But um, if it's part uh, or a member of, a, of an instance, uh, be instance data. But if it's actually a function, quote function, it's really a method, uh, defined uh, or attached to the class, then the class will try to interpret it as a bound method and give it um, the instance itself um, as self. And I know there's a lot of selfs in that, it kind of sounds circular, but if you play with this a while, you can see what I mean. Uh, it, it is all the same thing. Okay, this, um, does kind of raise another question, uh, and that is, um, are classes themselves objects? And I'll let that hanging. Are there any questions or comments on this part? And I'll, I'll, I'll pause a few seconds so that you can catch up to me and, and all of that. Um, I hope we're not having a video problem. No, 
looks like we're okay. Okay. Um, let's see. We're really getting down on time. Um, so, okay. Right, you didn't expect goodbye to retroactively go to Donald. Uh, and that's part of the reason I'm, I'm asking this question, are classes actually objects? Because in a language like JavaScript, or not JavaScript, excuse me, in a language like Java, um, and it, certainly in a language like C++ and things like that, um, classes aren't really exactly objects. So, in, in C++, if you were to make a class, once you compile the code, that's kind of it. It's not going to be changeable. But we were able to change a Python class. Um, and that's because a class is an object. So, uh, yes. Well, I mean, your bias is correct. Um, we, we do, in fact, um, have uh, classes as objects. So we made the duck class, and since I haven't done anything with it, it's, it's still there, right? Uh, and, um, well, let's see. I was using dir before to see if things were objects. So it's got a whole bunch of stuff here. See, aren't classes a data type? Well, yes, but they are also objects. This is a thing that, that people sometimes miss with Python. So it is a class, see, and you can see here, uh, duck is a class and it itself has a class type. So what type is a class? Okay. It's a type. Okay. Type is, by the way, in, in Python, really a synonym for class. Uh, in a lot of languages, they would just use one or the other. Uh, in Python, we kind of use both. But in fact, uh, a, the, the class we made is an object. It's got all of the features of an object. Um, again, uh, if we do dir, we can see it's got all of these things. Uh, greater than, less than, it's got a stir. Um, it, it's got the, the methods that, that we added to it. It's got all of that stuff. So it's a class. And the way that Python uses classes and, class and, and bound methods is that if I make um, an object, an, an instance like good old Donald, and I call a method on, on Donald, like goodbye, what it's going to do is it's going to, Donald is going to ask himself, uh, what am I? Where do I get my methods? I've got a method request here. And it will go look at its class, which is duck, at the time. It's not a prior thing. It's at the time and say, oh, yeah, I do have a goodbye method available in my, in my parent, the duck class, so I'll use that. And of course, if it doesn't, it will go up all of the, the super classes, everything it inherits from until it gets there. Um, but uh, that's the way it works. So if after the fact you add stuff to a class, or for that matter, if you're gonna be really sneaky and remove stuff, I suppose, uh, that will change what the class, what the instances see when they go to look up methods and, and actually execute a method. So it's, it's, it's a surprise sometimes to people that it works this way, but it does. And it's a consequence again of everything is an object, even things like functions and classes and stuff like that. Those are all objects. Uh, they get created as an object when they get loaded just like anything else would. So, yeah, it's kind of a weird thing. Uh, are we going to see copy and deep copy? Not today, I can promise you that. Uh, if you want to want to tell me a little bit more about what you'd like to see, uh, maybe we can figure things out. 
Um, okay, so the last bit, and we're, we're actually, I'm, I'm talking too much, I suppose, but um, here um, we're going to talk a little bit about creating a class. Uh, let's see, so you can call methods on instance. It goes back and looks up the classes based on. It doesn't just use what it had was created. Exactly, Kojo. Uh, and that's the thing that people tend to miss. Uh, it, it will refer to uh, the class object for all of its methods and use inheritance as well. And those things aren't fixed uh, at the time that the class is created. It's mutable. Okay. Um, so let's see here. So for one thing, um, you know, we've used the type command here and I used it on Donald, right? And it was, a, it was, that's that. And I used it on a class, right? And people use type a lot to find out what type something is. And it will return the type. Uh, and in fact, you can even do, um, sort of funky things with this. So we do that, that gets us a duck class. Uh, I can then do things, silly things like this. Um, okay. So you think this will work? Kind of a cheek, so I already said that you can do silly things. So, uh, yeah, you can do that. Because this whole call there basically returned the duck class object. So I could use the duck class object to instantiate another duck. So that's kind of a, a, of a silly thing. But so, so type does things that, that people don't always realize. Hey, Trey. Um, but it does another thing too, and that is type can actually be used to correct, um, or excuse me, to create classes. But in answer, yes. Uh, um, doing type Donald is getting its class, so it is the same thing as saying duck. So suppose I made a few functions. And I'll make one function that takes a thing. Um, let me see here. I want to check my notes and make sure that I don't send us down the wrong um, and a name. Uh, and then we'll do that. Okay. And I'll make another function that, um, let's see here. Let's just overload the dunderstir function here. Override. Here and that takes a thing, um, and um, it will return. Um, actually, we'll just return the name. So those are just a couple of functions, right? And um, if I were to um, do things with them, they're just functions. Um, and then I'm going to make a dictionary uh, called, I'm going to call it namespace, which does kind of give away the surprise, but it, uh, I'll do it. Uh, and one of my keys will be dunder in it. And it will have the, oh, excuse me, let me decorate this properly. There we go. 
and it will have this function that I just made as its value. Okay, and uh, I will make a function, um, and uh, its value will be, uh, and I will um, just stick in something called x for the for the sake of argument. So right now I've got um, a, uh, oh, hey, Mayella, yes, you like the shirt. Um, so I've, right now I've got two functions and a dictionary that refers to those functions. And I need to fix that because that would have been wrong. Um, okay. I can use those pieces and the type function to create a class. So I'm going to call this um, the scratch class because I'm making it from scratch. And I'm going to use the type function and I'm going to give it the name of the class. Well, if I could spell, I would give it the name of the class there. Um, these parentheses would be for any super classes, but I'm not going to use any, so I'm just going to give, a get, give it an empty, empty parens there, empty tuple. Uh, and I'm going to give it namespace for my dictionary here. And I'm going to try to use that as a class. Okay. Any takers? Anybody think that this crazy scheme will work? Has anybody done this before? Ah, I think Trey has probably done it before. Okay, well, let me see. Oh, wait. Oh, it's good to look there. I see that I made a typo there. So uh, it's so weird it has to work. I think that's probably a good attitude. Uh, definitely a good attitude to take. So, um, yeah, assuming I don't have any other lingering syntax errors, well, and if I do, we'll deal with them. Uh, let's see. So um, I would say what we'll want to do is we'll want to um, print some stuff. Uh, so we'll print the type of the thing that we made. Um, we'll print the type of the... Uh, object that we made from it, assuming this all works. Of course, we could have a horrible syntax error well before this. Um, and, well, let's see. Uh-oh. What did I do wrong? Oh. Okay, I think I can kind of fix that. So let's see if that actually helps. So yeah, you're right. What that does is actually use the type function to create a type. Uh, and again, um, the, the type is the same thing as a class. And yeah, as, as you mentioned, uh, the, the namespace I gave it was just a way of, of basically giving it uh, a mapping of the objects it needs to put together because every object ends up having a, a dictionary that contains its namespace, that is the stuff that it's got. So 
if you use the type method, you have to give it that dictionary so that it knows what's going on. Now, it's a good question. What would be a real case scenario for this? Um, honestly, you can, you can sort of come up with scenarios maybe for code generators or things like that, but I have never had to do this in actual real programs. Um, and, you know, it's not, my point in doing this is not so much to, that you would actually want to go use type to make classes, but rather it helps you understand the pieces that are a class, because basically uh, a class is um, a combination of a few things. Uh, it's, it's an object that has a name. It's got a, a namespace that may contain some stuff. And um, it's got also a list of the classes it inherits from. So, so yeah, there, there are a number of things that I like about doing this exercise because it kind of works through uh, some things about the way that Python classes work and Python objects work that aren't assumptions people coming from other languages would make. I mean, nor are they assumptions you'd make if you were just a beginner, of course, either, but people coming from other languages would, would, would find all of this stuff really kind of freaky. Uh, and yet, when you understand how these pieces work, uh, it then makes a whole lot of other things make a lot more sense. So um, I've been at it for about an hour now, and this is, is sort of a decent stopping place. I've got some other odds and ends that I may sort of package into uh, more objects at, at another point. I don't know. Um, but, you know, if anybody is, is at all interested in, um, in sort of hearing more or whatever, um, I would appreciate that. I mean, I think uh, as fun as it is, I'm going to call a halt to this. Uh, I will actually hear... Let me grab this. Um, if you want to comment and send feedback, I'd be delighted to have the feedback in, in any form. You know, you, if you, you can, can find me at, at naomicedar.tech, you can use the chat here. Uh, but I also did create just a real simple um, Google, um, Google form survey. Uh, and I'm not sure if that link is going to work wonderfully or not, but you can give it a try. Uh, and it's just got some free form fields where you can put in stuff if you would feel better doing it that way. But um, that's, that's sort of what I've got. And um, I will continue. People have said nice things about the first one I did. I, I hope this one was useful and I will uh, you know, continue to, to do these for a while, um, particularly since I'm stuck at home anyway, um, but um, just as a way to, to keep in touch with, with people in the community too. So at that point, I think I will um, sort of turn off my audio and switch. Um, and, and, and by the way, Trey, it was, it was good to see you and I appreciated your, uh, your uh, talk on, at the Trainers Summit yesterday. I thought that was, was also a good thing to watch. Uh, so I'm going to kill my video and kill my audio and just sort of switch over to the ending panel here. And I hope that I will see people some other time. <laughs>